In one of my previous videos, I explained how adaptive quality recording works and enables Verkada cameras to store footage locally for up to 365 days. And at the end of the video, I did promise you I'm going to have a small deep dive when it comes to uh, the bandwidth that Verkada products require. We're going to be focusing on cameras because as opposed to most of our other products, you also have to think about the actual streams themselves, not just the management bandwidth. So first of all, let me explain what actually happens in the back end when I press one of these cameras and it loads up. You'll see here, it's past midnight in San Mateo and I'm pulling live high quality footage from the camera overlooking our front door. So I'm going to use this uh, diagram that's been built by one of our engineers, Maurice, to uh, give you an idea what's happening when the camera communicates to the cloud and with any devices that are looking to pull footage from it. So initially the camera stores everything on itself. Remember it will store everything in SD between 30 and 365 days, depending on the model and also on the storage capacity that you choose. And the footage will actually be on the device itself encrypted. So by default, if you thought that a Verkada solution is purely a, a cloud solution, no, it is hybrid cloud. The storage still remains locally, but it is distributed amongst your cameras. And why this is an advantage, because if one of your cameras were to fail, every other part of the system is still intact and operational. So you can contrast that with an MVR or with a storage solution, unless you build redundancies in those systems, if that particular device goes down, everything stops operating. Now each camera talks to the cloud via a management tunnel that takes about 20 to 50 kilobits a second. And this is actually one of the biggest bandwidth requirements from a Verkada product because let's take access control or sensors, for example, they just communicate um, text files. So they'll have around 10 to 50 kbps. The cameras send thumbnails every 20 seconds. So every time you look in command, what you actually see would be these thumbnails. And this is to give you a almost live view to what's happening at that particular location without actually connecting to all of these cameras at the same time and increasing the bandwidth substantially. The cloud also talks back to the camera, but it does so usually when it needs to push the firmware updates, which at the moment are done automatically, although you can use command to set a preferred window of update. From then onwards, let's say you click on a camera in the browser of any of your devices, the cloud will actually act as a broker. And depending on the type of camera you pull and the resolution, it can go between 300 kbps all the way to 3 megs. But if you're actually local to the camera, so the device can route to its destination over TCP 4100, the stream itself will actually not leave the premise. So if you were to look at your ISP line in real time, you'll actually only see the management traffic. So let's recap this because it is very, very important. You have the management tunnel that allows the camera to send thumbnails and metadata such as alarms to the cloud at around 20 to 50 kbps. So even with 100 cameras on site, you still need just about five megs of upload bandwidth. And then on top of that, if somebody actually is watching it remotely, you have to factor in the camera model and also if the footage is streamed in standard versus high quality. And I'm going to go back to the adaptive quality recording white paper and show you that on page number three, you'll actually find all our camera models and specifications for both standard and high quality. Currently, Verkada uses constant bitrate to make it easy for you to calculate your bandwidth requirements and basically add everything up. And although you can't modify these from command, our support team is actually able to tweak them in case you have special requirements. So how are you going to use this white paper? Well, for every stream, you'll need to account for the bitrate and make sure that if obviously cloud backup is turned on or you might have viewing stations remotely, for example, that are pulling footage and pushing it on a screen to add all these numbers up and compare it with 
your existing load on your ISP line. I did mention this before, if you are local to the cameras, you should be looking at utilizing a local streaming. It is built in by default and as long as there is a routable path between the camera and your device or your viewing station over TCP 4100, it will just work by default. You'll see it marking command as HQ or SQ-local and the green dot will actually have a white circle. So check this out. If you're local and you don't see it, most likely there is some sort of firewall rule or ACL that's blocking the camera and your browser to communicate over TCP 4100. So let's say you're in a scenario in which you're deploying loads of these cameras at a particular location and for a particular reason, you cannot accommodate all their bandwidth requirements. Here are a few things you can do. First of all, you can enable low bandwidth mode. So what this does is that per camera, it will reduce the frequency of the thumbnails from 20 seconds to five minutes, also reducing the size. So this should minimize the management tunnel up to 75%. Cloud backup will be turned off. And for certain camera models that stream at three Mbps, that will actually be reduced at two. The way that you would enable this is that you would click on the camera, you'll go into settings and turn this on here. Or alternatively, you go inside the devices list, you select a few cameras and bulk edit their settings. Another thing that you can do is go inside the camera settings page and make sure that the default cloud live stream quality is set up to standard quality. So if anybody were to watch footage remotely, they will actually manually have to increase it to high definition and throttle the bandwidth. But in most cases, they might actually be able to do their work with standard definition. Last but not least, uh, and we just released this a couple of months ago, you can actually set a bandwidth limit on a site or a sub site. So how this works is that the cloud is aware of the number of streams that are actually leaving the site and it will block any additional stream that started that will exceed that particular limit. So just to summarize, Workada is a cloud-based solution, so you will require a certain amount of bandwidth for each device that you place on your site. However, as shown in this video, this is actually not as great as you might have imagined. The management tunnel is between 20 and 50 kbps, and you can reduce that further with low bandwidth mode. You can default all remote streams to standard quality, and you can even enforce a bandwidth limit for the whole site, making sure that a lot of people don't log in at the same time and impact your day-to-day -day activities. Each camera streams via constant bitrate and you'll be able to see those numbers in the data sheet so you can plan accordingly and make sure that you're always using local streaming, especially if you have a security team on site looking at the footage constantly because that will obviously make all the cameras stream at the same time.